Hello, my name is Tom Stiles, and this is Tom's Radio Room Show number 151. Today I'm going to do something a little different in that I'm going to do not really a review, but an introduction to a book that I recently purchased. And this book is on shortwave, shortwave listening, but it's a little different in that instead of like other books that I reviewed, where it gives you a lot of information about what's on the air, when it's on the air, antennas, uh, how shortwave listing goes, when's the best time to listen to shortwave. This is more of what I would consider a history book of shortwave listing. And the title is Listening on Short Waves, 1945 to Today, and it's written by Mr. Berg. And what he's done is he's captured basically the history of short wave. So you won't find any charts about what's on, when, uh, what antennas to use, and stuff like that. You'll find history. Now, the uh, he gives an introduction, of, of basically kind of an introduction of what short wave is, how it started, um, what it's all about. And then he gets into the various shortwave clubs that there has been over the years uh, where people were, you know, they had what was called a DX club where people would compare uh, notes on stations that they had received on shortwave. And, um, and then he, and he, he talks about the popularity and when they occurred. Uh, which ones there were. And there's a lot of detail about that history. Again, history. So he's got a whole, he's got like, you know, like a fourth of the book is on that. Then he has a section on literature that was available during his time frame regarding shortwave, uh, including magazines that were available, such as the Monitoring Times magazine, um, and other electronic magazines. Here's, and he's got a lot of pictures of, like, whoops, like here is a magazine called Communications Handbook. Here's 1972 cover page. Uh, and most of these are gone. They don't, they don't exist anymore, unfortunately. Um, and so he goes over all the, all the, uh, the magazines and newspapers and uh, newsletters that that were about during those times and what time frame they were uh, available. Then, yeah, the next section, he uh, he talks about um, listening programs and um, the the history of uh, particular programs that were on the air uh, that people tune in every day or once a week, whatever. Talks about those various programs that used to be very popular. Unfortunately, a lot of them are gone. And then he talks about the one section he does, similar to the other books that I've re reviewed or looked at, is he does have a section on uh, shortwave radios, or he calls it receivers, shortwave receivers. And he again, he has a lot of pictures, a lot of illustrations of radios um, back in those those times. Here's a um, this is a national. Here's a national radio radio. And there's there's the, that's one thing good about this. There's a lot of pictures um, illustrating you know things that were available back then. And then he even comes up, because this is through to today, and this book was published in uh, 2010, 2010. And like here's a, a more modern radio. This is a Drake, uh, a Drake R8. And that was like um, 1990s vintage. And then he goes through, uh, here's some. Portable radios. Oops. There's a Panasonic. It's uh, 
doesn't show. I think that was like 1980s. That particular model came out. And so he's got pictures and pictures and pictures of receivers. But then he's got a section on QSL, where that's the concept where people would listen to a program and write down the particulars of when the program took place, when they heard it, the time of day, the day of course, and a little bit about the program they heard. And then they would send that to the station that did the broadcasting. And that uh, station would read the letter, uh, verify that, uh, yeah, that happened, and send them something, usually a postcard saying, this is certifying that you did receive that broadcast. And like here's, here's an example of a postcard that was sent to someone. I did that for a short period of time, and that was kind of fun because um, it was good to get these postcards from, you know, international places. And so then he has a conclusion about, you know, what what happened, what's happened today, and where things are going and stuff like that. So I, I think it's a very good book, but it's not what I would call a reference book, but a history book. So this is kind of one of those books where you, if you like to read, you know, hard copy read, um, you wouldn't sit down and, you know, scan through this and see tables, mark tables and stuff like that. You just kind of read it from start to end and read it as a history book of shortwave listening. And uh, where, I, where I would use it is uh, I would take it with me like when... I uh, go to Walmart with my wife, and she's going to be in there two or three hours. I can sit in the car and read this book. Cool. Or uh, one of the things that's kind of a time waster recently is going to a dentist or a doctor's office. It seems like you have to wait forever. So, you know, again, I would take this along with me, you know, have a bookmarker in the thing where I left off and just continue on reading. And then it wouldn't seem so boring and so long before I got my appointment. So uh, I got this off Amazon store uh, through a credit from one of my subscribers. Thank you very much. You know who you are. And uh, I would recommend it if you're the type of person that likes to read books. You know, take the time. It takes time to read this book. Uh, and you're interested in the history of shortwave, not how do you listen to shortwave, but the history. This is what I would consider a history book. Also, I want to thank all the people that are using my Amazon store and going through my Amazon store to get to Amazon and purchase something. And then I get, <coughs> excuse me, I get a small credit, which I use to purchase things to review on this show and then give away. Now, the other thing is, you, if you're interested in something from Amazon and it's not on my store, you don't have to buy something from my store. Well, let me say that you don't have to buy something that's on my store from Amazon for me to get a credit. All you have to do is go to my website and pick on pick something, anything, and then go to Amazon, it, you know, do the link, go to Amazon, and then if you didn't want that particular item, you could then take it out of your shopping cart, delete it, and then go buy what you really wanted. So you wanted some uh, bird seed or something, and I still get, I get credit for that because you went through my store and you stayed on Amazon and you purchased it. Because I've, you know, I've gotten credits for a lot of, not a lot, but a few things that are not related to my store at all, because people do that. So just wanted to kind of guide you through that. And again, there's, by going through my Amazon store, there's no extra charge, none at all. And you're going to the Amazon, the real Amazon store, and whatever you would normally do on Amazon, you're doing. So I once you get to the store, I'm out of the loop. And you're doing directly with Amazon. If you need to return something, 
Amazon has a super return policy. Matter of fact, I just had to use it. And uh, it's, it's basically you, you send a small comment of why you're returning it, and that's it. You know, they don't ever question it at all that I've noticed. Um, so I want to thank everybody that has done that. It is extra work to go to my Amazon store and then get to Amazon. It is a little extra work, and I appreciate that you do that. That helps support my reviews by giving me a little credit that they give me. They, just give me, they don't give me money. They give me a credit, and then I can purchase things for review on this show. So that's the show for today. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.